What if I told you every time you opened up Resolve and started a new project, it could have all of your settings all set and all ready to go. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about today. I'm gonna to show you how to change the default project settings. So anytime you create a new project here in DaVinci Resolve, it's gonna have all of the settings that you want. Let's jump to Resolve, I'll show you how to do it. So in DaVinci Resolve here, we wanna set up our default project settings. So whenever we start a project, it's gonna be set up exactly how we want it. In order to do that, we're gonna to come to our project settings, the little gear icon down at the bottom right of the screen here, or you could go to the file menu and open your project settings that way. So in here is where we wanna go ahead and set up all of our project settings. Now for me, I'm gonna come in here, I generally edit in a 1920 by 1080. My frame rate is typically 29.97 and you can leave all this stuff as it is. You can come down, change your optimized media and render cache if you'd like to. You can change the format of it. Now, I like to change this enable background caching from five seconds. I like to change that down to one. So as soon as I stop working, that background caching is gonna start pretty much right away, right, within a second. So I like to keep that to one. You can automatically cache transitions in user mode. I think that's fine. Also automatically cache composites in user mode. Scroll down, down here is where you're gonna wanna set your working folders, right? Where do you want your proxy files to go, your cache files and your gallery stills. So I've got mine set up to go to my external hard drive and that's just fine. I'm gonna leave that where it is for now. Next, we've got frame interpolation. Now you can change these three items on a clip by clip basis if you want to, or you can change it you know, at the end of your edit. So typically for retime process, I might change this to something like optical flow. Motion estimation, a lot of times I'm gonna change this to you know, enhance faster or enhance better. And you'll notice we have a new option here for speed warp, but I'm gonna change it to enhance faster or better. And then motion range, typically I leave that on medium, but you can change these if you want. For me, typically I'm gonna leave them at their default settings here, so that way everything will run as smooth as possible. And then after the fact, I might go back and change this to optical flow if I've got a lot of stuff with movement or if I'm doing something other than sitting in my studio here. Next, I would come down to image scaling, make any changes here that you might want for mismatched resolution. Typically I'm gonna use that scale entire image to fit. Color management, if you work with some kind of log format or you've got uh, some kind of you know typical setup that you're using for your cameras and your footage, you can come in here and change this. I like to go YRGB color managed. You can leave it on automatic color management if you want, or you can make adjustments to any of the settings. Under general options, again, change any of these that you want to fit exactly what you need. Camera raw, if you've got a specific raw profile, for me it's Canon raw that I typically use when I'm filming on my C100 Mark II. Capture and playback, you can set your default locations to save your clips to right here if you want. If you're capturing video right into Resolve, you might wanna check and make sure your frame rate is all set up. For Fairlight here, you can make some adjustments. Typically your audio sample rate is gonna be 48,000 if you're working with video. If you're doing something like a podcast only, you probably wanna go with 44.1. So I leave mine at 48,000. Then I like to come down to my target loudness level. And since I'm always working for YouTube, I'm gonna change that to minus 14 LUFs. And I don't add anything in path mapping, but you can if you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. So now that we've got our project settings set up for our project, I wanna make that the default setting. So anytime I jump in Resolve, open a new project or start a new project, these will be the default settings. And before I show you how we do that, I wanna take a minute and thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Artlist. Artlist is an awesome one-stop shop where you can get stock footage, you can get sound effects, music, templates, and, and even, even get, get this new voiceover feature to make your voice sound however you want when you're trying to edit your videos. Create a cool narration voice. When you sign up for an Artlist account, you get unlimited downloads. They have over 700,000 assets that you can choose from. Everything is royalty free. I've been partnered up with Artlist for a long time and I found all of their assets extremely useful and they really just help take my videos to the next level. So if you guys need some assets for your videos, you might wanna check out Artlist and see if it's something that interests you. With everything underneath one roof, Artlist is a one-stop shop where you can just get all of the stuff you need. No need to join multiple sites and everything. Just go to Artlist, sign up for an account and you can get all of these assets as part of your subscription. A big thank you to Artlist for sponsoring today's video. Back in Resolve here, in order to tell Resolve to use these settings as the default, anytime I create a new project, you wanna go back to your project settings here, 
And in your project settings, click on the three little dots at the top. And now you can see I've saved a bunch of presets. So you can save these as a preset. If you come down here, save current settings as preset. But the next thing that you want to do is come to set current settings as default preset. And when you click on this, it's going to tell Resolve, hey, every time I start a new project in Resolve, use these settings that are in this project right now as my default project settings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. You'll get a little message that says preset settings will be replaced with your current settings. You can't undo this. And I'm going to go ahead and say update. So that really helps speed up your workflow. But let's say you want to take that one step further. Not only do you want your project settings to be set up like we just did, but you want pretty much the entire project to be set up with your bins, your timeline, and kind of have some things ready to go. So the next tip I'm going to show you here is something that Mr. Alex Tech has talked about for a long time here. He uses it and it's a great way to just jump in and have everything ready to go for your project. So check this out. Back in Resolve, we want to go ahead and create all the bins that we need as well as any of the timelines that we want. So let's say I want to create a new bin. Let's just say we call it audio, create another new bin. We're going to call it footage, another new bin. We'll call it graphics. And let's say that looks pretty good. Now I want to create a timeline. So I'm going to go timeline, create new timeline. Now you can name this whatever you want. I'll call it YouTube video. Now I don't have a Fairlight preset set up at the moment, but I'll show you how to do that in another video. So you can create the number of audio and video tracks you want. Typically i uh, go with two video tracks and actually I'm going to do three video tracks and then audio tracks. I'm going to do four and you can use your project settings that we set up. That's just fine. If you want to double check it, you can unclick it. Check your format. Yep, looks good. Monitor, output, color. Make sure it's all set up the way you want. Go ahead and click create. So now I can even come in here and change some of these and label them however I want. So I've gone ahead and labeled them. I've got my screen recordings, my C100 Mark II. I've got my text layer. I have screen flow recording, which is my computer audio. I've got my good microphone up here. I've got a music track, a sound effects track, and I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now you can even jump into Fairlight and let's say that I know I have a preset I want to put on, you know, my dialogue track. I can go ahead and apply that. Go ahead, open my preset library, come down to track presets, my Mana EQ dialogue, apply that. Let's say I wanted to apply a preset to my music track right here, music under dialogue, apply. I'm going to close that. So you can set these up however you want. So now you can see I've got some settings and effects on here on my audio tracks, things that I would normally do anyway. Another thing I like to do is change my meter to YouTube. So when I go to check my loudness at the end of my process, that'll be good to go. Jump back into the edit tab. Now you can have any other types of things in here that you might want. Kind of just get the bones set up of your project. So that way when you open it up, you're just going to have to dump stuff in your timeline and you can be off and running to edit your project. So once you have all this, we're going to go to file export project. Now, because I don't have it labeled as anything or named anything, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. We're going to call it something. I'm just going to call it YouTube video default project save. Now you can put it wherever you want. I'm going to go ahead and throw it on my desktop. And I know Alex puts his on his desktop as well. Go ahead and hit save. So now that we've got that all set up, let me close DaVinci resolve. And all I would have to do is come over here and double click on this project and it should open it up and resolve with a brand new project for me. And it's not going to make any changes to this. It's just going to create a new project, put it in my database, and we should be good to go. So I'm going to double click. So now it's going to say, do you want to make a copy of the project? We'll call this create faster projects in resolve. Go ahead and hit OK. And now we have a project that's all set up. We don't have to do anything. It's got our tracks. It's got our timeline, our bins. All we got to do is bring in our footage and then start working with it. We don't have to do all the project setup stuff that takes a bunch of time in the beginning. And if you wanted to create another new project, you just go ahead and click that DRP file that's on your desktop and it'll make another new project. And again, this is a method that Alex has showed for a while and that's kind of where I learned it too. So it's a great tip. It's a great way to speed up your workflow here in Resolve between default project settings and just setting up the whole project so you're good to go when you want to start editing. If you have any questions, comments, perhaps a concern, feel free to leave it down in the comments below and check out art list if it's something that you're interested in or something you've been thinking about. I like them. They work out awesome for me and I think they would work out awesome for you as well. All right. With that said, I'm out of here and uh, I will see you in the next video. Peace. It's a little far away. See ya.